Hey folks, Brian Keeney with Occam Defense, and we get a lot of questions about Loctite and what we should use, all that. And we also come across a bunch of like really good shooters, people who otherwise know a lot about their guns who um, don't know the proper method for Loctiting. So I thought we'd run through that real quick today. Um, very briefly, Loctite is the kind of like Kleenex for bathroom tissue or whatever, um, or facial tissue. Loctite is the most popular brand, it's, uh, made by a company called Henkel. Um, and these are the three varieties we really like. Um, blue is for stuff that you may want to undo. Red is forever. And green is for bearing surfaces. And these particular part numbers, there's thousands of Loctite part numbers, but for guns, we really like these three. The 243 has a little bit of um, it's got something in it to help if you've got oil contamination on your surfaces. We'll go over that a lot more in a minute. Um, 272 is a high temp version of permanent. Um, it works quite well. Blue, it's hard to find a high temp uh, version. So blue melts when you get it up over, I think something like 450 Fahrenheit, which isn't that hard to do. 620, this is a high temp bearing compound that's for, we use it for clamping the Merc to the barrel, but any any application like a Midwest, an Ultimac, anything like that where you're going to be clamping a barrel, um, this is the stuff you want, 620. Uh, we've got a blog article on our website with links to all of these, but you can find them on Amazon if you just type in Loctite 620, 272, 243. That'll get you where you need to go. Um, as important as the Loctite is the prep that you do ahead of time. And so acetone is your friend. Um, it obviously should not be eaten, sprayed on your children, lit on fire, any of those things, ignition sources. It's um, somewhat poisonous. It's not good for you to breathe, not good for you to drink, eat, skin contact, all that. Um, little painter's cup works great. You can um, actually get two of these. You'll pour your acetone into one of them, swirl your screws around, and then dump it into a secondary cup. Well, you can dump the liquid out, keep the screws in this one, and um, put them onto a towel. The other thing to understand is that oil, or acetone dissolves oil. It doesn't magically disappear it. So if you pull your uh, degreased parts out and they were heavily oiled before, there's going to be a thin layer when they're still wet with acetone. There's actually oil in that acetone. So the, the rightest way to do it is to have some dirty acetone that you swish your parts in to get most of the oil off, and then some fresh acetone that you spray onto the part and then blow off with air to really get all of that oil off of there. If you wanted to get it like chemistry clean room grade, you'd wanna repeat that several times over. We don't need that level with this. We're just trying to not have them be an oily mess. Same thing goes for female threads. Um, I don't have any, well, I've got a big thread here for our castle nut. Those female threads in there, um, you're gonna wanna lube after you've degreased, you want both sides degreased, and then you wanna put a bead on the inside of the threads. If it's a small hole and it's blind, meaning that it's like a cup like this, you're gonna wanna put a, just one drop onto the hole and then you wanna take a clean wire or toothpick or something like that and pierce that air hole, go in and out a couple times to clear the air and the Loctite will naturally wick down against those threads. Uh, if you have a through hole, meaning that you can see to the other end, you're gonna to wanna to put a drop on the top of that hole and then gently blow it. Don't put your lips up against it. That's how you get monkey pox, a little bit of a gap there and gently blow and you'll watch the, the the Loctite wet out and flow down in a way that is super cool and happy. You're also gonna um, apply thread locker to the male side of the threads. And so that's real easy, just like you're doing toothpaste on a toothbrush. Um, there are two more good facts to know about Loctite. Um, the first is that it's an anaerobic cure. And what that means is that it hardens in the absence of oxygen. And you can prove this to yourself if you want the way I did, which is I thought it'd be really cool to have Occam lube in a syringe. And so I filled a syringe solid with Loctite and I made a plug in a couple minutes. The air that is sitting in the top of 
of this container here is keeping it from curing. Don't ask me how the Loctite at the bottom knows that there's air at the top. I don't have all those answers. We should ask VSO Gun Channel on that one. Um, the second cool thing to know about Loctite is that its cure time is temperature dependent like a lot of things in chemistry. Um, and it's an exponential thing, meaning that the hotter you get, you get even less time to work with it. And so if, if your shop is 100 degrees and your parts are 100 degrees and your Loctite's 100 degrees, you only have a minute or two to get that done. Conversely, if it's cold, it's gonna take a while for that to set up. Um, and it can go from minutes to, I don't know, like an hour, something like that. Um, I haven't really exhaustively tested that. I just know that it's a thing. So the moral of the story, the ask me why I know this kind of part of the story is that I was setting up Mercs at this exact bench here and we use red on the gas tube to size it so that it's exactly right for every, um, for every gun. That's what this castle nut is for here to really get the, a precise measurement going. We do that before we apply the bearing compound and the blue for the threads, for the screws. And I'd set it up, but I hadn't reefed it down yet. I just sort of loose wet fitted all the parts and then I got interrupted. I came back five minutes later and it was a brick. So uh, just keep that in mind. Those are some pro tips. The big take, the, the bumper sticker summary is degrease both sides, Loctite both sides, use the right compound for the right application. Blue is when you wanna be able to get it apart again. Red is forever. Green is for clamping surfaces. This is Brian Keene with Occam Defense. Hope that's